Hi, I'm Chef Jamie Vincent Bordenero, and this is Pursuit of Passion, where I share with you mouth-watering recipes, tips, and techniques to give you the tools to create memorable meals for you and your loved ones. Welcome back to our third episode of Pursuit of Passion. We're doing some beautiful seared sea scallops, and big news for this episode, we've seen already a mushroom risotto, we've seen a braised short rib, this time we're doing a composed plate for you. So you will learn multiple techniques and even some plating tips to make your plate stand out. Let's cook. Let's get right into it. We have our U10 sea scallops. These are from Maine. U10 refers to their size. It's about 10 of those per the pound. Over here we have a beautiful sweet potato. This one's organic, and it is super healthy for you. Next up, we have a pristine butternut squash that we will break down and roast a little later on. And of course, we have sage, our herbaceous bridge for all of these wonderful winter flavors. And we have some pistachios that we will season and toast for a pistachio crumble. And the ubiquitous food rub butter, of course. We will be using heavy cream both for our sauce as well as for the sweet potato puree. Extra virgin olive oil will add a nice floral aroma to our garlic oil and broccoli rabe. Garlic and aromatic perfect for this dish. And the sumo citrus is an oversized mandarin that comes from Japan. Really, really fantastic and sweet. Broccoli rabe, a beautiful green to add to the nutritional value of this dish as well as its taste. Moving forward with our sweet potato puree prep. Let's preheat our oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Add a little canola oil to the outside of our sweet potato over a sheet of aluminum foil. Rub that oil in and season with kosher salt. Now we're going to wrap the sweet potato in a foil pouch, and this will help prevent the skin from direct contact and possibly burning, and also steam the sweet potato. Bake for 40 to 55 minutes, and it'll be ready for pureeing. Butternut boats and batonets. Our butternut squash has a stem end, which is solid throughout, and a blossom end, which contains the seeds. We'll remove the top part of the stem end and the bottom of the blossom end. And then we'll separate our stem from our blossom end. Now that we have our halves separated, we'll use our chef's knife to go around and follow the contour of the squash to remove the skin. Once we have it peeled, we'll go right down the blossom end down the middle to reveal our seeds. Then using a spoon, we'll simply follow the shape of the interior of the blossom end and scoop the seeds out nice and cleanly. Clean up our board and our knife, and we'll move on to the stem end, which we'll use the same technique to go around and peel that skin off. And now we'll take the blossom end that we've already hollowed out, and we'll cut it into these little boat shapes. The important thing being consistent size that we'll lay out on the roasting pan to roast. Now we're cutting our batonets from the stem end of the butternut squash and we're creating even planks we're cutting the batonets for aesthetic purposes but also so that they'll roast evenly and they will offer a consistent textural contribution to the overall plate
now that we have our butternut squash cut and laid out on our roasting pan, we're going to drizzle some extra virgin olive oil, season with kosher salt, and top with fresh sage. Let's roast this in that 375 degree oven for 10 to 15 minutes. Next up is our garlic broccoli rabe, inspired by my loving and incredibly talented Sicilian grandmother. We'll take our garlic slice off the tail end and go all the way through the root end, separate our cloves. Once we have them all separated, begin to peel them with a paring knife, using the tip to thoroughly peel off the outer layer. And once we have our garlic peeled, we'll begin to slice. We're slicing it not razor thin because it would overcook and potentially burn by the time we infused its flavor for this preparation, uh, but also not too thick so that it wouldn't be a giant chunk of garlic in each bite. Onto our broccoli rabe. The cleaning process is quite simple. Rinse under cold water, and then we go after the root end, which we will trim right off because it tends to be a bit fibrous. And we're ready to cook. Let's get a saute pan over medium heat. Add about three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and our garlic. And we will begin to sweat them. We don't want to get too much color because that could potentially lead to it being bitter. And in order to promote the sweating process, we add kosher salt. While the garlic is sweating, we will move over to our broccoli rabe as we have a pot of boiling water that we will season with salt liberally. And we will blanch our broccoli rabe. The biggest and best, most obvious indicator for when your broccoli rabe is fully cooked is the brightness and vividness of the green color. That's the chlorophyll being activated and set. That's when you know it is at its peak of perfection in terms of aesthetic as well as nutrition and flavor. So we will remove our broccoli rabe from the boiling salted water onto a paper towel lined plate. Okay, our garlic has reached a beautiful state of caramelization. We're starting to get golden brown, but not too dark to become bitter. And we will carefully add our blanched broccoli rabe to the mix. Now we're not really looking to cook any of the components anymore. We're simply taking the broccoli rabe and seasoning it and dressing it essentially in this beautiful extra virgin olive oil that's been infused with the toasted garlic flavor and mixing it together with that caramelized, rich, sweet, nutty, aromatic garlic. Our butternut squash is beautifully roasted and ready to go. Now it's time for our pistachio crumble. Lay out the pistachios evenly on a tray lined with foil, season with kosher salt, and roast for six minutes. And our wine for this pairing is a Pazzo Signorans Albarino from the Salnes region of northwest Spain. It is 100% Albarino grape. And it is also a fantastic value at just $14 a bottle. Some tasting notes for this fantastic wine. It has a crisp acidity, which will be great to cut through the richness of the sweet potato puree and balance the sweetness of the scallop, floral notes, and notes of apricot and peach. Let's dive right into our Sumo Citrus Bear Blanc. We have our Sumo Citrus, of course, our fresh sage, white onion, 
heavy cream, and plugra butter. The process starts out with our onion, top and tail, the base end and the root end, cut right down the middle, and we will peel off the skin of the onion with a paring knife. Once we have the onions peeled, go ahead and make very thin slices, keeping the root end intact, because we're gonna go back and make a dice. We'll cut horizontally to create those even layers and create a very small dice close to a mint, which will infuse its onion flavor into the sauce without becoming overwhelming. Moving on to our sumo citrus. Once again, it's an oversized mandarin coming from Japan, high in sweetness. Take the top end and the tail end off. And we will begin to make our citrus supremes. Meanwhile, we will squeeze out every last drop of juice that we can because that will be the primary flavoring of our Sumo Citrus Bear Blanc. Use your serrated knife to go around the outside edge of the Sumo Citrus in a clockwise manner so that you can see each knife stroke that you need to make. And we will take each peel and juice that as well. Now it's time to make our Supremes. The Citrus Supreme will go in on the inside of that membrane on both directions, both sides, and scoop it right out. The other method to use, you could potentially put the knife through, go against and scoop against the membrane. Whichever way is more comfortable for you is just fine. Juice the rest of the inside of that Sumo Citrus, and we move on to our other Sumo Citrus, taking the peel off. And in order to minimize the amount of pith that we get with our peel, we use the shaking motion with the peeler. And then we will just simply cut this citrus in half and squeeze out all the juice that we can. Let's go ahead and start cooking our sauce. A medium high heat, some canola oil in the pan, and let's start sweating our onions. Kosher salt, of course, to help with the sweating process, as you know. Once the onions begin rendering and become translucent, we add our sumo citrus zest along with our sage. Then we will deglaze the pan with about a quarter cup of that albarino wine. Layer again the seasoning with kosher salt and reduce that wine down until it's almost dry or as the French like to refer to it as au sec. Now that we've reached that state where our wine is reduced sufficiently, we add in our sumo citrus juice and another layer of seasoning in the form of kosher salt. Continue reducing this liquid over high heat. And then once we see larger bubbles forming, we can add in our heavy cream. Continue reducing over high heat. Give the sauce a taste, see where the seasoning is. Adjust with salt if necessary. And once we've reached the viscosity that we need, which is to coat the back of a spoon, we're ready to begin adding in our cold plugra butter. Start out with a few cubes at first and make sure you're whisking constantly, shaking the pan a little bit, which will help to emulsify the butter in the sauce rather than simply melting butter, which will give you melted butter and reduced cream that will not create a nice, beautiful emulsion. Continue whisking in that cold butter, moderating your temperature, not necessarily having the pan on the heat at all times. If it gets too hot, again, it can create melted butter with your sauce, which will be a split or broken emulsion 
rather than the smooth emotion that we're trying to create. And once again, once you believe you've reached your desired consistency, give that sauce a taste, adjust with seasoning if necessary, kosher salt first. That will bring out the acid level in the sauce and allow you to have a really accurate gauge as to whether or not it's ready to go. And now that we're there, I'm going to remove the sage so that it does not over infuse and overwhelm that delicate, sweet flavor of the sumo citrus in the sauce. On to our mortar and pestle montage. And this one was handed down to me by my maternal grandfather, Leo, who loved nothing more than cooking for his family. We're going to use it to grind our pistachios. It's a fantastic vessel with the friction that it built into it to grind nuts and spices and other things. And now it's time to get this sweet potato puree process in motion. Our sweet potato is roasted nice and tender. And let's go ahead, unwrap this bad boy. And we're going to use a paring knife to peel the skin from the potato, which is pretty easy to do. Just use the foil as a barrier between your hand and the hot potato. If you need time to let it rest and let it cool a little bit, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. Once the potato is fully peeled, we can go ahead and put it right in the base of our blender. Now we have some hot, heavy cream, and we'll start out with just about six ounces of heavy cream to our sweet potato, and a tablespoon of kosher salt. The plugra butter that we have diced up, we're going to add last, just like our emulsified sauce, we're going to add the butter in last to create an emulsion. And you're going to want to blend this mixture on high speed using a plunger that comes with the blender, ideally. In this case, I'm using a plastic spoon, adding in the butter to create an emulsification, giving it a taste, seeing where the seasoning is at. Needs a little bit of salt. So I'm going to go ahead and blend that in. And there we have our finished product. Let's move on to cleaning our U10 sea scallops. So there's an adductor muscle attached to the side of each scallop. And when that's cooked, it tends to be a bit chewy. So to remove it, use your thumb and your index finger and just gently squeeze carefully to separate it from the scallop flesh and pull right off. To sear our scallops, let's get a pan over high heat add our canola oil to coat the bottom and we're going to wait till it gets just before the smoking point of the oil before we drop our scallops season the scallops on both sides and make sure that both sides are also contacting a paper towel to be nice and dry any moisture would create steam which would prevent us from getting that beautiful golden brown crust once you hear that sizzling sound as the scallops contact the bottom of that hot pan, you know you are in good shape. Right, moving around the pan to make sure the oil contacts all surfaces of the scallop. That will help to create the even crust. I'm using a spoon to gently put pressure on the scallop so that the surface area of each scallop is in 
complete contact with the hot oil to create an even crust. Once you believe you've reached a nice deep golden brown color, we can go ahead and add in our sage and plugra butter, which we had on the side for the basting process. Not only will this butter help to create steam, which will stop the scallop from becoming too caramelized and burnt, but it will also take on the flavor of the sage, which we are then basting onto the scallops to gently cook the bottom side of the scallop and also create more and more layers of flavor. The way you want to gauge whether or not the scallops are ready to flip and remove from the pan is if it sticks to the pan or not. That will tell you that it is fully cooked and ready to go on one side. And once the scallops are able to freely release from the pan after basting, it will only be a gentle and quick kiss on the other side just to remove any chill that it may still have to it. But we don't want to caramelize the other side so that we have a really great uh, textural contrast with the crisp caramelized crust and the smooth, rich luscious interior. And now we get to see the culmination of all our hard work with the plating. Please feel free to use your artistic and creative freedom to plate however you would like. Just some insight as to the methodology behind the plate up that I'm doing. I usually start with a little puree on the bottom. Not only does that help to hold other ingredients in place, but also this puree, being the sweet potato puree, has such a vivid, shocking brightness to it that when you place brighter, more visible ingredients in the backdrop of the plate, they're easier to see rather than ingredients that may get lost in the foray. So have fun with whatever plate up you decide on, as long as you're enjoying it and the people around you have a wonderful time around the table. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, if you enjoy the video, please hit the like button. And if you really enjoyed it, go ahead, if you haven't already, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. And remember, please be well on your pursuit of passion. Which?